back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about rigid transformations. So there are three types of rigid transformations that we're going to cover today, but before we do that, we're going to start with just defining what a rigid transformation is. So we have two words here. We're going to start with the word rigid. Rigid means unchanging or something that's not able to be changed. Whereas the word transformation means, well, we're drastically going to change it. So it kind of sounds like when we put these two words together, it's kind of like an oxymoron. But in geometry, a rigid transformation is a very specific type of transformation. So a rigid transformation is when you change a figure's So we're changing something, but we're not changing everything. We're going to be changing the figure's location or the way it's oriented. So or orientation. But the rigid part comes in because we are not going to be changing the shapes or figures, size, or shape. So without changing size or shape. It's a different color for that. Okay, so transformation, where that part's coming in, the part that's changing, is the figure's location or orientation. We kind of get that with the rotation. Um, it's oriented differently. Um, but the rigid piece of a rigid transformation is that we're not changing anything about the shape itself. Its size and its general shape are staying the same. Okay, so the three types of transformation that we're going to be working with today are rotations, translations, and reflections. So now I'm going to go through each one of those individually, give you a definition, and then give you an example. Okay, so the first rigid transformation we're going to go through is a rotation. So a rotation is when a figure is turned about a particular point I'm going to change colors just for a point here to emphasize that and it can be turned in different directions so it's turned about a point I'll show you what I mean with this example in a moment. It's turned about a point either. We can turn it either clockwise or counterclockwise. So clockwise, it's going the same direction as a clock like this. Okay. Or counterclockwise. other way. Okay. Now I can't just say turn it counterclockwise. It's not quite specific enough. So we also need to know what degree measure we'd like you to turn it to. So do I want 90 degrees? Do I want a full 180? Um, do I want to go all the way back to where I started as in 360? So at, we're going, we're turning about a point either clockwise or counterclockwise. And uh, by 
a specific degree measure. Okay, so if you want to tell me to rotate a figure, there are three things you need to tell me. Which point am I rotating around? Am I going clockwise or counterclockwise? And the third is, well, how far am I going? By what degree? So in this example, I have this figure A, B, C, D. We're going to rotate figure A, B, C, D um, about point E, about this point. And I'm not quite done yet. I need to say um, what, whether I want to go clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's go, um, we'll go count, counterclockwise. And we're going to do 90 degrees. So this is my example with this figure. Okay, so we have figure A, B, C, D, and what I did was I pre-traced this figure, and I'm going to lay it right on top. Now, what I'm going to do is put a little cross oops, right on top of point E. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then I'm going to put my pencil or pen right on point, whoops, you can see how it's already rotating, <laughs> right on point E, okay? And I'm going to do a 90 degree rotation. And this is where my new figure would land. Notice I did 90 degrees counterclockwise and I used point E to do that. So then what you do, I'll use a different color for our new figure. We'll use like a darker pink. Oops, it's back on it. This is where A would be. And we're going to call it A prime because it's not the same A that was over there. It's a new one. Okay. And then point B is right about here. I'm going to call it B prime. Point C was up here. I'm going to call it C prime. Kind of ran out of room a little bit. That's okay. And point D is right here. So I'm going to call it D prime. So my new figure is right here. And if you still needed the notes, I know it's not perfect. It's kind of hard to do on a whiteboard. Um, if you still needed the notes, you could always fast forward and then freeze frame right where all this stuff was. I know it got kind of messy because I ran out of room, um, but you can see how we took this figure and we rotated it 90 degrees. You have to relabel your new points with prime notation to say, well, this was my original and this was my new one. So it just is a way to tell your reader that you did actually rotate the figure. Okay, so that was a rotation. The next one that we are going to go through is a uh, transformation. All right, so the next one we're going to go through is a translation. So when we translate a figure, um, we are basically moving that figure or sliding it. So a translation is when a figure Um, is slid up, down, left, right, okay? Okay, but it's without changing its orientation. So you're really just sliding it across the plane. So without changing 
its orientation. Okay, so we're gonna do an example here. Now, you can actually translate something by what we call a vector. And a vector gives distance, how far am I going, but it also tells me which direction do I want to go. So I'm going to show you how you would translate this figure A, B, C, D using a vector. Okay, so in this example, we are going to translate figure A, B, C, D, I. Now let me draw in a vector that we can use to translate with. Uh, let's say I'm going to translate it by this. Maybe go a little further than that. Let's see this vector, and we'll call it vector C, E. Okay, so by vector C, E. Um, the other way you could do this, if you don't want to write out the word vector, you could do C, E with this little like line with a half arrow. This means vector C, E in symbols. But no, you don't have to say translate figure A, B, C, D to the left this many units and up this many units like you would do here. If you use a vector, it already tells you the distance and the direction. Okay, so I'm gonna use some tracing paper and show you how this would move. So we are basically taking this figure but the way I can actually make it work with my vector is start sliding point D all the way along my vector. So then my entire figure goes with it. So I'm gonna now mark my points. Should have opened that ahead of time. <laughs> okay, so D ends up right on top of E, and we're gonna call that D prime. D is up here. We're going to call that B prime. I have A right over here. We're going to call that A prime. Okay. And then finally, make sure these are all lined up. Uh, we have C down here. We'll call that C prime. Okay, so then we have translated figure. A, B, C, D by vector C, E. Now note, you could also have told me to translate um, each point over a certain number of units and up a certain number of units, and you would have ended up in the same place. So there's two different ways that you can actually tell your reader where you want your figure to go. You could say to the left or right a certain number of units, and up or down a certain number of units, or you can translate by what we call a vector. Okay, so the next one we are gonna go through is a reflection. All right, so our last one for today is a reflection. And a reflection is just when we take a figure, so when a figure, So when a figure is flipped, over a line. Okay, so if you're gonna tell me to reflect a figure, you have to tell me which line I'm reflecting across. So, um, we are gonna do an exa another example, and we are gonna reflect figure A, B, C, D um, over line 
So I have my figure A, B, C, D here. I have my line L. And so what I'm going to do, I'll show you how I'm going to reflect across using tracing paper. So I see this line here. So I'm going to actually fold across that line. Okay. And I'm going to flip my figure over. So then I end up with my new transformed figure. Okay, so let me mark that really quickly. And remember to use your prime notation. And then D prime. So, let's connect the dots once you get them. And we have reflected figure A, B, C, D over line L. And that's what you get. Okay, so the last little segment is um, I'm going to be going over some vocab words that you'll need to know. Um, and then that will be all for this video. Okay, so to end this video lesson, we're going to go over three words. Um, one of them I did use quite frequently. Um, which was prime notation. So prime notation is what we use after a rigid transformation has taken place. So after a rigid transformation has taken place, We use prime notation to distinguish the original figure from the newly translated one. So we use prime notation to distinguish the original figure from the newly translated one. Okay, so we also have these two new words, which I haven't quite used in this video yet, but I could have. Now, the pre-image is actually the original figure. So this is the original figure and that's before any type of rigid transformation has taken place. So in all of our examples, our pre-image was that figure A, B, C, D. Now, our image was the one that was translated. So this is our newly translated figure. Okay. And the image will have some kind of prime notation. So in all of our examples, that would be our figure a prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Okay, and that is all for this video.